So just you speak, like, how do you think, how would you want your community to honor you? Honor me? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not really, you know, that's not really important to me personally, because, you know, I've received a lot of honors in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. I think there are 13 pages on Google, if you put my name in it. Um, so I've had a lot of exposure and acknowledgement for my work over the years. And I have the respect and love of those I respect and value. You know, my um, my partners in different areas of work that I do mm-hmm. and um, young people we've been working with for a long time. For me, that's sufficient. So I'm not really focused on any special honor or recognition or award for me the more important focus probably should be um, how we support eldership as an institution and how we ensure that it survives because we say we are an oral people and um, we talk a lot about history and we share stories and expressions and idioms and so on we still never disciplined about recording and writing those. And the ways in which we have always transmitted those things through our griots and storytellers, that stuff is kind of getting lost now. You know, So for me, a good recognition would be how do we make sure we strengthen and stabilize the ways in which eldership can be sustained as opposed to Nene needs to get an award or Nene needs a special dinner. You know, that tells him that he's amazing as an elder. I'm not interested in those things. Those things don't really right. matter to me. Yeah. Right. But it, it's it's a great answer because essentially what you're saying is honor yourself or honor elders by just carrying on the intention and continuing to make action towards that intention. So that's, Absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. And so one thing you you talked about was elders organizing. So this next question is, in an, in an ideal world, what role do you see elders playing in a healthy community? So how do you see elders organizing themselves in order to kind of keep that um, blueprint going over the years, just as it has done, you know, that from thousands of years ago? Well, it depends on what the focus is. So for example, if you're doing work on policing or on social economy or economic development, and it's work that is broad range and requires a really sustained kind of leadership, mm-hmm. um, then you know if you're really African centered, in my view, you think about the best ways and most efficient ways in which or village matrix would work in a context like this. Mm -hmm. And it would work when we ground all of our work and our thinking in an understanding of what similar things we have done in the past in this area, what things we can learn from and build on, around having a clear plan, obviously, around having the right talent and resources around you, expertise and experience and so on, around having the right infrastructure to make things work, and then around having eldership support that provides feedback and input mm-hmm. in a fashion that is um, a bit removed from the operational activities you're doing, but provide a consistency, uh, being a sounding board, um, second sober thought, that sort of thing, if needed, uh, bringing big picture, visionary things forward, um, to get feedback, but not getting elders involved in the day-to-day running of things. Um, having that general kind of um, sense of support and guidance that you know is there in the background for you to call on when needed, and also to have a measure of accountability. So if you are messing up with the money or you know, being inappropriate in different ways, the elders could talk, call it to task to say, you know, we need to meet and talk about some of these things and figure out what we're going to do and give you some advice about um, things that we think might be helpful, et cetera, et cetera. So 
um, in a practical sense, the elders would be like, almost like the Senate, which yeah, receives information or bills um, that have already passed through the house. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the second chamber to say, okay, they've kind of done the groundwork. They've looked at everything. Now they want us to take a final look at the big picture to see if there's anything we're missing before the thing goes ahead, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we um, so I just came back from doing some work in Halifax with an organization where this structure was being created. And one of the challenges was that there were elders on the elders council who wanted to be much more active and involved, wanted to attend every meeting of the planning committee, wanted to be um, um, consulted and contacted as a kind of um, uh, approval mechanism at every stage, basically. And um, we, you know, we talked it through a bit because we wanted to make sure that the process had the benefit of the expertise that elders bring, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to be um, intrusive or, you know, micromanaging something. So the compromise was that the elders would remain one step removed, provide guidance and support when needed. Mm -hmm. And then for particular things where the expertise of a particular elder might be needed, that person could step in, but only for that time-limited specific thing. Not to be involved or be up in the business, the operational business, because that is not the elder's role. Right. You know, so that was a kind of compromise made because the argument was, you know, we have elders who are excellent in A, B, or C, but we're not using them, you know? And so we said, okay, let's find a way to bridge that in terms of utilizing their expertise, but at the same time, not being so intrusive because young people need to find their legs in their own ways most mm -hmm. of the time and to get the support they need, but they need to fly, you know, mm -hmm. fly. So, so that's my vision of it. Yeah. And uh, like, I, I definitely see, I definitely see the vision of it. And I think a lot of times people think that leadership means that there's only one, right? But, but we don't realize that like elders are needed in every single like sub community that is out there. And so there happens to be that like leadership role happening in multiple ways, like almost like star systems, right? Like there are a bunch of different star systems and they're all, you know, organized in their own kind of way but there are roles that are being played in a multitude of ways so right. maybe in like this in this complex we have our group of elders that manage this or when we go to this thing there's a group of elders that do that and I really see it as like an advisory council um, so right. even when I get into like spirituality you know you you connect with your ancestral advisory council and elders are simply just the physical representation of that personally yeah, well, to me. Well but, uh, said, well said. Yeah, that, that was great. a great answer. Great answer. So just to kind of bring this to a close, do you have a call to action for African youth across the world? Call to action just means like, you know, is there is there some place that you'd like to send anyone who's listening to this interview, um, whether it's a link, a website, or what not to either support what you have going on or to join in? Well, my call to action generally to our young shining stars or brothers and sisters who are about the business of changing the world again, because we are always at the forefront of transformation and revolution. Mm -hmm. My call to action is vigilance, preparation, um, fortitude and determination that in every sphere of life, in health and education and criminal justice and child welfare and economic development and so on, um, we have a task ahead of us to be organized and to be persistent, to dismantle white supremacy wherever we find it, and to provide some healthy options that are centered and grounded in our collective experiences and our identity and our values 
Um, so we build our own institutions, we control our own economy, <clears throat> we provide our own disciplinary infrastructure for our young people, for everyone actually. And until we do those things well, where we have um, real power of control over those things, um, it's gonna be a, a monumental struggle. And the struggle requires all of us being on board in a very um, practical and real way, but young people being the tip of the spear because it is young people that has driven our agenda always historically. And it is young people who will continue to drive it. Um, mm -hmm. So I value and applaud the efforts of youth who are doing the work on the ground. Keep your, 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 your back straight, keep your vision clear, your tenacity, your courage, your strength, your discipline, your power. Mm -hmm. Guard it and be grounded in spirit, be guided by your ancestors. And we will win. And we have won over and over again. We will win. We'll continue to win. So the struggle continues for all of us. And whatever I can do to support, I am here. We have um, groups all over the place doing amazing work in Africa, on the continent, in the Caribbean, um, in, uh, in Canada, uh, in the U.S. So I would say just find your niche and um, shine your light. Mm -hmm. Ashe. Ashe. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Nene. This was actually amazing. And, um, you know, we, all I can say is infinite gratitude. Like, just we give gratitude to you and your work and your words um, because you know spirit speaks. So thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to close this off right here.